So motor motor neurons are, are absolutely required for movement, but they're so deeply insufficient because they don't they don't know what to do. They have to be told what to do. And the what we're gonna look at in in this series of videos is uh, the sensory input that they get that uh, tells them what to do. Um, and so we're going to look specifically at the stretch reflex. Uh, we'll go on to a couple of the reflexes and to some other uh, reasons why motor neurons uh, um, are engaged, but we're going to focus uh, primarily on reflexes and on sensory reflexes. All right, so to understand this, we need a little bit of vocabulary. When we think of a muscle, we think of the, the muscle fibers that contract. But if we, if we zoom in here, what you see that is that inner, um, interspersed within these contractile fibers are a series of capsules. And these capsules are called muscle spindles. And inside of these muscle spindles are a series of, of tiny little fibrils. They're, they're, they're muscle-like, um, but they're much, much thinner. So here is the main muscle, the part of the muscle that we think about as muscle. And within the um, muscle spindle are these tiny little muscle fibers. So if we take a cross section through here, what we see here is these big muscle fibers that, that we think of as muscle. And then inside of the muscle spindle, this capsule, we see these tiny little uh, fibers. Now, the big fibers, the ones that produce visible contraction, force that produce the force of contraction are called extrafusal fibers. And the ones that are in these muscle spindles are intrafusal. They're intrafusal fibers. Now the intrafusal fibers are not simply a thin muscle fiber. They're a little bit different because they have spe they're specialized along their length. If we look at one intrafusal fiber from one end to the other end, if we can zoom in right here, what you see is that there are, there are two polar regions separated by an equatorial region. The polar regions are the part of the intrafusal fiber that are muscle-like. These are the only places, this and this, are the only places where this fiber can actually contract. So the contractile part is the polar regions. The two polar regions are contractile. The equatorial region is not contractile. And it is at this equatorial region that there is a special afferent, a special sensory nerve that has an ending that just wraps right around the equatorial region. And it's going to be sensitive to stretch of that equatorial region. All right, what happens if this equatorial region is stretched? That's the stretch reflex. So here we have a, this afferent that is wrapped, it's wrapped around this intrafusal fiber that sits inside of a muscle uh, where there, there are extrafusal fibers and then these intrafusal fibers within the muscle spindles. And wrapped around the equatorial region is this special afferent called the 1A afferent, okay? The 1A afferent. And this is a highly myelinated uh, axon. It's, it's a proprioceptive, it's carrying proprioceptive information, information that you will do not ever uh, receive consciously. You have no idea how long this muscle is. You just do not get that information. It goes only to the, the motor neurons and to, to um, motor, neurons, not only motor, motor neurons, but also interneuron, motor interneurons. So the really amazing thing about the 1A afferent is that it innervates directly on motor neurons. And that motor neuron then goes back and activates an extra, extrafusal fibers. This is, a, this, is a, this is a motor unit. So it's going to activate extrafusal fibers in the homonymous same muscle. All right? So the, to, the way to learn this is to draw it. I'm going to draw it, and you're going to draw it at home. 
all right? You're going to draw this every which way. And once you draw it, you're going to understand it. So here is the extrafusal fiber. Here's the intrafusal fiber. There's a 1A afferent that wraps around here, has its cell body in the DRG, and then goes in to the, uh, into the spinal cord, goes streaming through the dorsal horn, intermediate gray, and goes directly to a motor neuron that innervates the, uh, the uh, extrafusal fibers in the homonymous muscle. All right. We're going to add two extra um, uh, features to this. One is that there is another muscle over here. This is the homonymous muscle. And here is a synergist. And it also has extrafusal fibers. Um, and the same muscle, the same message from this 1A afferent is also going to go over to the motor neuron pool that innervates this synergist muscle. Okay, so we're not only going to activate the homonymous muscle, we're going to activate muscles that act, that whose action is, uh, it helps the homonymous muscle. Now, as one may imagine, if, if I want to uh, contract my biceps, the best thing I can do to, to achieve a contraction, a flexion, is to relax my triceps. And that's called reciprocal in inhibition, and that also occurs. And the way that occurs is that this, mus this message from the 1A afferent is also going to go, we're running out of colors, so I'm going to start reusing colors, uh, to a, an interneuron. And this interneuron is a very famous interneuron. It's called the 1A inhibitory interneuron. And the 1A inhibitory interneuron is then going to inhibit a um, motor neuron that innervates the antagonist. So now, there will, now you're going to decrease the activation of the antagonist muscle while exciting the synergist and the homonymous uh, muscles. Okay? So in response to a stretch of this muscle, all hell breaks loose, right? A stretch of this muscle gets you a contraction, feedback contraction. You're undoing this. Stretch, contract, contract everything that helps it and relax everything that is going to oppose that contraction. All right. So that is the basics of the, uh, of the um, stretch reflex. Let's just look at that drawn out. This, again, just shows you that the 1A afferent is going to excite motor neurons that innervate both the homonymous muscle and synergist muscles. And if we look at this, you see that the 1A inhibitory interneuron is interposed between the 1A afferent and the motor neurons that uh, project off to the antagonist muscles. All right. In the next video, we're going to see, uh, we're going to understand what is the role of the gamma motor neuron. <laughs>